Football fashion is a huge business within the sport, but in this video we are going to take a look at the controversial rise of it and why people wear what they do in the terraces today. Football fashion, or footy casuals as people call it, started in probably the 70s and 80s where teams were dominating Europe. We saw Liverpool, Aston Villa, Nottingham Forest all dominate Europe over about a 10 year period. And it saw fans of these clubs going to different countries like Italy and Spain and Germany and bringing back clothes that people have never really seen before. Stuff like Lacoste and CP Company that are so popular nowadays, not even just within football but just in general, were brought across by these fans. And it was claimed that it could be the Manchester Perry boys, the Manchester United firm, or it was said maybe the Liverpool fans who would travel to Europe with the team would bring these items of clothing back with them. Apparently a lot of the time these fans would rob shops abroad when hooliganism in the UK was so prevalent, especially in the 80s. And regardless of how they obtained the piece of clothing, they brought it back and it influenced the casual scene. But it was tough because as only one team from each nation would be able to challenge in the European Cup, it would only be one fan base, one city, who would bring items of clothing back to the rest of the UK. And that caused little subcultures and little scenes. And I obviously wasn't alive, but I'd heard a lot about the skinhead culture. And they had a reputation of violence and fighting, which actually caused the police a lot to tell the fans to keep their Doc Martens a staple of the skinhead kind of outfit, to leave them outside the stadium to kind of neutralise them, which caused a lot of these fans to wear more casual clothing. Because if you're wearing a more expensive piece of clothing, like a CP company or a Lacoste, then the intention was that the police weren't going to think that someone who was dressed in expensive clothing would start fights. And it was supposedly the Scousers who brought the Adidas trainer into fashion, especially in the football scene, because they were quoted as being very sneakerheads. And I mean, nowadays, if you go to Liverpool, it's all about the Nike Air Max 110s, but back in the 80s, Adidas was the main brand, especially in football. And as we can see nowadays, it's gone more to the Spezial or the Gazelles, but back in the 80s, it was mainly Sambas and Stan Smiths that the fans would wear to the games. But it just shows the effect music has on football fashion because in the late 80s, Manchester became more of a thing and that was the rave culture that originated from Manchester. Like the famous club, like a lot of people older than me know, the Hacienda and the Happy Mondays were banging to that scene. People were copying their style, wearing flares and so on. And this in addition to the weather, because the weather in England, as everyone knows, is awful. Because a lot of these clothes coming from Italy and other hot European countries, they're not tailored to withstand the English weather. And if you're standing on a terrace for 90 minutes every single week, you're gonna need a cagoule, you're gonna need a puffer coat. And that's exactly what they saw, because fans started wearing more clothes like Fred Perry, and Lyle and Scott. And this somewhat moves us into the 90s era because one of the most important periods of UK football fashion happened in Euro 92 when it was hosted by Sweden and England were over there. They didn't do too well and apparently a lot of England fans rioted over there and they looted to the outlet store called Genius which apparently had an up and coming brand called Stone Island. In. And we can see today you can't go to a football game without seeing hundreds of lads wearing Stone Island jumpers, Stone Island coats and the badge on the arm is so recognisable. But this somewhat links in to the 90s music era because as we saw one of the biggest English bands ever, Oasis burst onto the scene and the Gallagher brothers were so big in football culture because obviously massive Man City fans and they looked like they just came straight off the terraces but they were playing in front of hundreds of thousands of people across the world. And this added even more because the rise of lag culture, the rise of pub culture increased because from what I've read, the rave scene kind of died down a bit when the Britpop movement came in and we saw bands like Blur, Damon Albarn, sported Chelsea, we saw the Gallaghers, they sported Man City obviously, Stone Roses were still knocking about, they sported Manchester United as we can see this is the one still gets played before every Manchester United game. But it's just because these songs were so high in the charts, they were playing in every pub in the country and if you were going to a pub before a match day, you'd obviously hear Oasis, you'd hear Blur, you'd hear Pulp and all these bands. And I'm sure when people saw them on TV, when they saw them at the Brit Awards, wearing Parkers, wearing Cagoules, wearing Stone Island, they wanted to wear them themselves going to the games. But casual clothing seemed to have a bit of a decline, but a rise because hooliganism was going down, CCTV had been brought in a lot more, and it was basically tougher to get away with the stuff that they could do in the 80s. However, films like Football Factory with Danny Dyer in, and Green Street with Charlie Hunnam and Elijah Wooden made it more appealing to dress like these people and also a lot of memoirs were coming out 
of hooligans from the late 70s and 80s. And it's somewhat dramatised but also glorified being a hooligan wearing all these casual football clothes going over to other countries, bringing them back for other people. Because if we're looking at nowadays, and this is what I've heard, but if you're wearing CP Company Stone Island Lacoste back in the 90s, the 80s, the 70s, then you were seen as to be part of a football firm. But nowadays, it seems like it's an outfit and respect that people wear these things because if you wear, say, a club top from the current year, a lot of people would see that as being a tourist fan, being a glory supporter. And of course, those things are ridiculous. However, it's just the football world. Whereas if you go to the ground in a Burberry scarf, you're on a nice pair of brand new gazelles, you're wearing a Stone Island cagoule and all of that stuff, then from a certain group of people, you'll have seen to get more respect. But talking about current football shirts, it brings on to retro shirts because there's another scene in football fashion. It's not just the casuals, it's the retro shirt because that's become so massive in today's world. If you go on any YouTube video of people talking about football, any talk show, anything on TV, you'll always see a fan wearing a David Beckham shirt with the Sharp logo on it. You'll see a Omri shirt with the O2 logo on it. There's so many shirts that people wear nowadays because in my opinion, I think they look better. I think a lot of shirts from the 90s had more creativity on them. I mean, look at so the Fiorentina ones from the 90s with the 7UP logo on it. Because I think nowadays, they're very minimalistic. I think Nike, Adidas, all these shirt suppliers know that people are going to buy them regardless of how they look. Yes, if they look better, they might become more popular. However, fans are just obsessed with these football teams nowadays. They'll spend 80, 90 quid on a Spurs shirt that hadn't changed in three years. And unfortunately, the minimalism on these shirts just make it less appealing and that's why fans are going back in time and wearing these creative shirts. And you can see that because of the price of these things nowadays are ridiculous. Go on, classic football shirts. You'll see some old kids, even some from the 2010s, retailing for over £100, which is just mind-blowing to me. However, people are just obsessed about them, but it's all about credibility, again, because let's take a Man City fan. If he stands supporting them after they've won all the titles, if he goes back in time and buys that brother shirt that the Gallagher's wore, then maybe fellow Man City fans are gonna see him as more credible and give him more respect instead of thinking he's a glory supporter who's just been to the club shop before his first game. But I think football shirts are making their way across to America, which obviously America has the highest profile celebrities in the world. And when you see Snoop Dogg, I think he was wearing a Norwich shirt at one of his gigs, or Mike Tyson, I think he had a Rangers shirt on at one point. It just gets the branding out there. And of course people are impressionable. And if they see their favorite celebrity who are mostly in America wearing them, then it's just gonna make the shirts go worldwide. But we also have to look at footballers and how they affect football fashion. And there's probably not a better person than this to look at David Beckham, because David Beckham was probably the first global celebrity from football. He married Victoria Beckham at the Spice Girls, of course, and he was pictured in the late 90s and 2000s wearing all the latest designer brands, the Gucci's, the Armani's. And it's funny because if you ask kids nowadays, some might not even know David Beckham was a top footballer. His reputation definitely preceded me because I just missed his prime. And you're seen as more as a celebrity than a top footballer. But I think players have seen that nowadays and especially with obviously the rise of social media, Brand is a huge thing with footballers. It gets them more sponsorship deals. It gets them probably more notoriety with clubs that they might pay them higher wages. Because obviously, if a footballer's brand is high, then he's gonna increase the social awareness to that club. And therefore, the club get more fans, the club get more revenue, and it's just a complete circle. And we've seen a lot of footballers, especially from England and the UK, in recent years try to put their name out as more of a fashion icon and when we take someone like a Jack Grealish or a Bakayo Saka recently or a few years ago if you look at Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Tom Davies they were really out there with their fashion choices but unfortunately with football and especially English football if you're not playing well then you're not deemed good enough to wear what you want. Hector Bellerin when he wasn't playing well for Arsenal people were getting really frustrated what he wore off the field However, when he was playing well, they could wear whatever he wanted. And in a vacuum, that is ridiculous because how does wearing what you do off the field in any way affect your performances on the field? But that's just how some football fans see it. And I think a lot of older football fans would have seen that in the 90s with the Spice Boys for playing for Liverpool. That was people like Jamie Redknapp, that was people like Steve McManaman, and Robbie Fowler. And I'm sure a lot of older people remember that they wore the white suits to Wembley when they were in the final. And this caused a lot of controversy at the time because they were seen as more the playboys, the partiers, and despite their good performances on the field, I'm sure back in the day it always got brought down. I read a funny story where apparently Brian Clough rejected 
Gary McAllister from joining Nottingham Forest because he turned up to the training ground in a pair of cowboy boots. It's just interesting nowadays because there's less of the subcultures that there was in the 80s. There's less of the mods, the skinheads, the punks and so on. So when you go to a game, there are a few options for what you will wear. It's either the fans who go head to toe in the club merchandise. A lot of these will probably be the tourist fans, but they might just be normal fans. A lot of fans will be the kind of hipster retro people who go in the classic football shirts and a lot of fans will be the casuals and you normally see those probably in the lower leagues because they're more local and people could somewhat claim that they're more rooted and humble football fans than a lot of the top teams but let me know what you think let me know what, what you think is the best fashion culture in the uk at the moment in football there's no wrong answer you can wear whatever you want to a game it makes no difference to anyone and if you want to wear a new man city top to a game then you should be able to do that but i do think a lot of football fans see the game as an event and they want to dress in their best clothes that they possibly can but let me know what you think if you could leave a like on the video if you could subscribe that'd be really appreciated like i say if you could leave a comment and thanks for watching.